Hi friends. So uh, we are into our last lecture of uh, week nine. That is dedicated to uncertainty, and uh, this is fifth lecture. And uh, I am really excited <coughs> to discuss two techniques, uh, which are like you know, uh, very very uh, you can say valuable uh, for risk based engineering and uh, one is bayesian modeling if we discussed or we uh, we just brushed through the bayesian modeling as part of evidence based approach in our previous slides on uncertainty uh, uh, during overview and all that um, and then now today uh, we'll discuss wh wh what is the uh, parametric connotation of this uh, bayesian approach and the second one is monte carlo technique i would say this technique is a backbone of risk assessment because um, when we do fault tree analysis uh, event tree analysis and finally we try to arrive at uh, at the level of fault tree the top event probability of safety system so fault tree uh, analysis uh, Mon monte carlo simulation provides the probability and associated bound which forms part of the event tree um, these two together and further the uncertainty is propagated into the event tree with all the events in the event tree they are having their probability uh, values or frequency value and associated uncertainties and finally we have a core damage frequency statement wherein the median value of core damage frequency and upper and lower bound uh, so <clears throat> it's a, it migrates and propagates from basic component level to system level system level to plant level and uh, it integrates the whole plant and the valuable addition is we have the statement of uncertainty so uh, let us see these approaches uh, as uh, as we are advancing these two uh, approaches and Bayesian updating has got a special advantage when we are de dealing with a complex problem of shortage of data, especially in cert certain areas, then uh, this Bayesian up updating is a, in simple word if I have to say, it is a mathematical tool to combine the data which is available in the open domain or in handbooks with our limited plant specific experience. So as plant experience go grows, uh, the uncertainty bound they start reflecting our culture till that time we have some mathematical uh, tool uh, which is enabling us to integrate the estimates available from open domain into the our system at the same time it is allowing us to take advantage of our own data also it's a really valuable thing you know so let us go to uh, this what is the scope of uh, this lecture Bayesian methods will be discussing and uh, the fundamental of Bayesian approach uh, lies in the conditional probability. Events can be independent or can be dependent. So independent events, uh, they will have, uh, they, are, they are a part of any system. So we know the end logic probability of A into probability of B failure is a uh, you know, failure. So there is, a, uh, there is an interaction taking place as an independent event. But, but when they are dependent, then one event affects the other event, how that we will see in the subsequent slide. And you know, this has become an advantage in terms of having the uh, Bayesian updating technique. <coughs> so uh, what it does basically, it addresses our weakness having less data, imprecise data, uh, not imprecise data, but lack of data um, uh, with, a, with a limited experience. So uh, use the best of best estimate approach. Uh, by combining the generic source data uh, with the plant specific data and provide a consolidated st statement and as plant uh, experience grows the data will reflect plant culture, plant <coughs> performance and uh, will have a true uh, reflection of our system performance and data and that is very critical to any analysis. Uh, role of Bayesian technique in risk based engineering as I have discussed uh, in the previous thing. Uh, now at any time point of time I have been asked to do an, um, like living PSA with the Bayesian approach I always have the latest data which is combining my generic data from the handbook to with the, our plant specific data. 
and um, its mathematical formulation also we will we'll discuss. Then second is Monte Carlo. In Monte Carlo, we will see how Monte Carlo modeling happens and I think we will see an example um, uh, in a fault tree analysis. Okay. So, <clears throat> Bay has given a valuable technique available which was hidden in a very, very simple algorithm. We will see in the next slide. So, Bayesian technology uh, or Bayesian approach uh, forms estimation of posteriori. Posteriori means what we want, result, based on what is the prior, that is generic data that is available uh, with the evidence, that is uh, what are our limited data available with us. So, posteriori will, uh, will, uh, will uh, mathematically come, uh, uh, provide a result based on, uh, based on the availability of data from generic source and plant specific source. Um, let us say, uh, we have a, uh, we have a, uh, we have to arrive at failure rate estimate, but we have very limited data from the from the plant. So what we'll do? We'll see. We'll look at our, uh, um, we can say, uh, handbook or international data data bank. From there, we'll take the failure rate, and along with that, we'll take the error factor. Okay. Let us say if the uh, failure rate is uh, um, some quantity per hour, and then. We, if we know the distribution also, our problem is solved as, as far as the priori is concerned. Uh, because you know the, this availability of distribution will allow us to characterize the prior data. Now we have the evidence, let us say uh, this was a problem related to a pump, then we will we'll know our plant specific sources, uh, how many failures, three failures in 1000 hours. So we will have a likelihood estimator for uh, failure also. So now these two together. Uh, like uh, priori, uh, posteriori is calculated by uh, priori given that evidence. Evidence means our three uh, failures in 100 hours. So the, our problem becomes simple and when we come to the modeling level, <coughs> let us discuss how this powerful technique has come out from a simple, uh, uh, simple um, Boolean interaction, probability of A interaction B, if they are dependent event then it will not be simply probability of A multiplied by probability of B. It will not be. It is a probability of A interaction B is equal to probability of A into probability of B given A. Okay? So, we can also say this thing because uh, uh, through Boolean logic itself, we can say probability of B, A interaction B is equal to probability of B into probability of A given B. Both the equations are equal because both are equal to probability of A in direction B. So, uh, can we equate them? Yes, we can e equate them and then we, we have, we can estimate the probability of A, which is here, probability of A given B, that is this term. So, that what we have is probability of how it looks, probability of A into probability of B given A divided by probability of B. Okay? So, we have got this uh, expression. And the beauty of this expression is, if we separate out, this is a left hand side term and this is a right hand side term, what they are trying to convey? Probability of A given B is equal to probability of A into probability of B given E as, uh, so what we have priori is here, let us try to read, posteriori is this one and this term is the term which is say um, in, uh, is, is a relative change in probability of A given B. That means evidence as goes on increasing, it will, it will uh, express the uh, uh, probability of A when B is known. So, uh, do not you think with a small uh, simple formulation, we have arrived uh, with a very powerful technique and for dependent uh, events actually. So, now, if we take the discussion further, um, we know that probability of A given B, when we have all the scenarios summed up into one, it has to be one only. Okay? So, if this formulation is available to us, then if I multiply both sides on probability of B, then what I get is the original expression probability of B given probability of A. So, it is nothing but n is to power 1 probability of a interaction b or a dot b you know okay so so now if i have to say what is probability of b is equal to 
summation probability of b given a probability of a okay so uh, we have taken this from there now uh, if i have to convert into bayesian equation so probability of a probability of a given b is equal to probability of a probability of b given a this term that is at the bottom what we had in previous slide probability of b probability of b can be characterized by this term is equal to nothing but probability of b given a into probability of a and summing of all the spectrum of event that are available to us so if i have to talk about the uh, let us say continuum data this is this was representing some sort of a discrete data if i have a continuum data continuous distribution let us say to be very precise so if if we say this then uh, we have this probability of uh, failure rate which is a continuum of value given b some evidence is equal to failure rate probability of failure rate into again the same formulation but here it is integration uh, with the available range that is available to us and we this is called averaging term or you know normalizing term or whatever is a bayesian equation in continuous distribution so uh, how to evaluate the uncertainty bound uh, for this distribution um, well when we have normal distribution we have two parameters that is mu and sigma uh, when we have exponential distribution we have one parameter so for one parameter when uh, we have this distribution and if we integrate this uh, distribution uh, it it will be a numerical integration to the way it looks like so uh, from lambda l to lambda e u, u that is failure rate lower limit to upper limit into lambda x uh, lambda x x is a random variable x1 x2 x3 and then del y is equal to 1 minus alpha so uh, um, as uh, i had told just now uh, it require a numerical integration from uh, from here but uh, yeah so it is a very compulsive technique but then this is this is how in principle the upper limit and lower limit for bayesian uh, uh, bayesian estimates can be found out okay now uh, in pra what is its role um, that is monte carlo simulation uh, bayesian we have understood we have estimated or what are rather we have um, indicated the uh, base model for evaluating the upper bound and lower bound now let us come down to monte carlo uh, technique uh, as i had mentioned in pra it has got a very very critical role uh, because it does the simulation of fault tree Uh, in a bottoms up approach that means it starts uh, in fault tree at uh, component level to the system level top probability and uh, here if i talk about the log normal distribution uh, the complications uh, complications uh, have been solved uh, by the characterization through error factor so what we have in log normal distribution is suppose if i have demand failure probability Uh, and then error factor okay so uh, this uh, this uh, enable us uh, as i said the range from component to the system and plant level now how to characterize uh, the uncertainty uh, and the process is like this uncertainty input uh, uncertainty in input data is characterized by probability distribution used to represent the data for example the failure rate of motor operated valve uh, as input to the fault tree is defined that includes so here basically we are trying to understand the um, procedure here so distribution is considered say log normal the median value of the failure rate this or this two becomes an input uh, then uh, error factor uh, of uh, for lambda and t along with the supporting parameter as per the requirement of analysis monte carlo there are two techniques monte monte carlo and latin hypercube model monte carlo technique was earlier blamed for uh, using the computer resources and sometimes it used to become prohibitive uh, uh, for solving the complex problem but nowadays the computational efficiency has increased so much that uh, this uh, uh, at least in the given situation when you do fault tree or event tree analysis this doesn't become a um, 
pro prohibitive uh, for arriving at the uh, results. Uh, Latin hypercube is also uh, used, uh, but I think uh, most of the professional uh, PRA software, uh, they, in fact, sometimes a, a, a selection has to be made which simulation technique you want, and people uh, uh, go for Monte Carlo simulation. And then uh, Monte Carlo simulation, one thing is, so uh, that you know, you have to use number of iteration, which is a sort of million dollar question, which will give us the very good results. So the experience suggests that if the failure probability is of the order of 10 to the power 2, minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 3, expected in this one, then, so because one hand calculation can be done and a probability can be arrived. But when we talk about the uncertainty, then we have to take at least minimum 1,000 or 1,200 samples that's, uh, uh, that simulation has to be done, iteration I would call, to arrive at a distribution on top. Now what I am trying to say will be more clear in the next slide. So uh, let us discuss the uh, systematic procedure for Monte Carlo simulation. So assume that we had a fault tree and that fault tree uh, we have drawn uh, through point value. That is, let us say uh, uh, pump, we assign only failure probability, okay, no distribution. So it will definitely give us a point value on top also, that is top event, okay. But now, if we, we, we want to characterize each node with failure probability as you can see here, let us say 5 into 10 minus 3 plus error factor 3. This describes one basic event. And in the, this line, all the basic events in the fault tree have to be, uh, 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 be characterized by certain values and error factor. So this is one stage. Then, um, so uh, since it is a part of the application software, uh, actually uh, Monte Carlo simulation has to be understood from academic point and sometimes to analyze your results. But as far as the functional part is concerned, um, all the uh, computers and uh, algorithm which have been implemented, uh, they do just job. So now let us take an <coughs> example. We, we have a fault tree in which the top event has got uh, the cut set uh, with A plus BC plus D plus E. This is the cut set that are available that uh, with this you reach the top event. So what I am trying to say here is. Uh, when we have the uh, Monte Carlo simulation, defining an equation is central to Monte Carlo simulation. And this is what we have done, uh, very complicated integration, differentiation, all those things they happen. So, uh, so requirement of uh, a equation is a must for Monte Carlo simulation. Second, so in uh, probabilistic risk assessment, it is the uh, uh, total t probability value whether it is common cause, human factor and all, they will come and they will define the top event. So that is how we have cut set equation for any top, top event. Then second important part is uh, having an algorithm which gives us random number generation between 0 and 1 because this process has to happens randomly, uh, random process happens because we have a distribution, one value has to be picked up and one iteration will complete when the value reaches on top and uh, uh, it gives the result. Uh, and for, uh, this uh, repeats for all the things. So uh, this is another important. So, so random number generator is critical to uh, Monte Carlo simulation. Then the uh, so and then third thing is iteration mode. That means a value is picked up from uh, there are five five nodes. So from each node one value is randomly picked up and then it propagates through the fault tree to till top. Uh, register that value again. It comes back again. Random number the uh, values are generated on each node, basic nodes. And then finally, it happens uh, more than 1000 or 2000, whatever number of iteration we have given in uh, assigned in our computer. So you can see this typical value of 1200 iterations are required minimum to get a smooth curve on uh, top uh, for this thing, you know, uh, distribution. Now, um, we have distribution of top event probabilities. So now from there, uh, getting a percentile for 5 and 95 percent will give us the uncertainty bound. And let us understand through this graphic representation over here, uh, we have the equation for uh, just now like you know, uh, one equation is there A and M, you know, 
here is a a intermediate node so top event is t okay injection failure so t is injection failure and it is a product of a and m that means auto injection fails and manual injection fail then then only this event occurs so so for this we have for uh, coming to auto injection we have pump failure or wall failure wall fell to open or pump did not start so this will lead to auto injection failure well, based on the control logic you know uh, manual injection is uh, we have uh, wall failure there is some hardware failure or human error failure human did, did not uh, could not open the wall the way it should open uh, uh, should have opened it so manual injection did not take place if these two happens then injection failure occurs so what what it what we do is we assign the probability 1 into 10 to minus 3 and error factor and we provide value of a uh, uh, description of the distribution so through error factor we are giving log normal distribution and this similarly for probability 5 into 10 so for each node uh, we are for a basic node we are giving failure probability error factor failure probability error factor and now this is put uh, there we have this final equation the final equation is here that means uh, when we have uh, these two uh, a and m when they are multiplied you get this cut set in here for the top event so this is our final equation which will go into the monte carlo simulation you know and then we'll set the uh, number of iteration let us say we said 1000 okay so, so we have, now we have provided information in a, uh, along with the data that we have inputted we have <coughs> we start the monte so in one recursion it uh, randomly one value will be picked up uh, from here one from here one from here one from here uh, by random number generator and they will go and apply the logic and put a dot, dot somewhere here so wherever it is then second iteration again it will flow so it is a bottom sub approach you know and it travels uh, more than 1000 times to give a distribution like this and uh, wherein we have the mean value where we have the uh, uh, probability value and error factor so don't you think it is an elegant approach to characterize uncertainty in the fault tree for event tree also similar approach the initiating event characterization uh, with the med median value and then uh, it's an er error factor and finally we have top events their system failure and their uh, uh, fa uh, failure probability and uh, uh, failure probability and uncertainty and we have event tree and finally it reaches the core damage level so core damage also we get a distribution like this and uh, other information upper bound and lower bound so okay so these two lines they indicate upper bound and lower bound just uh, uh, the numerical integration you see 5% percentile and then 95% percent percentile and we'll get the upper bound and lower bound also so uh, we come to an end of uh, bayesian approach and monte carlo approach which are central to risk assessment and uh, and then uh, i have depended very heavily on some paper especially modres book on risk and uh, reliability and one uh, fuzzy reference from professor verma and all and uh, yeah mccormick books it gives a very good beautiful description of uh, uh, bayesian approach especially the bottom term which uh, which uh, provides information on a given the status of b and all logic and derivation is given so i take this opportunity to uh, to thank uh, mccormick uh, and then uh, professor verma modres uh, that's how the knowledge is built and yeah and we have this presentation thank you very much